Well, good afternoon. It's Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. It is Friday, October 4th, uh, just a little bit past noon, almost 1230 East Coast time. And this is a tropical weather update for the sensitive information sharing environment. Part of the All Hazards Consortium that is focused on offering the SICE hub uh, to states and private sector liaisons within those state emergency management organizations. Also across uh, utilities, transportation, communication, uh, food, fuel sectors in the private sector uh, to keep everybody on the same page at the same time uh, looking at upcoming threats and also supporting the recovery of Hurricane Helene. Uh, well, in this tropical update, uh, we don't have any immediate threats to the United States, which is great. I do want to show you the uh, GOES satellite imagery, and you can see out there in the ocean, I'll point it out here. Uh, this is Hurricane Kirk. We've been talking about Kirk for a number of days now, and it has been a rapid intensifier. Right now, as of uh, 11 o'clock Atlantic Standard Time, the National Hurricane Center's uh, analyze this at 140 mile per hour winds. It's a category four hurricane. It is a major hurricane out there in the Atlantic Ocean, and it is going to stay out there in the Atlantic Ocean. However, I'll show you in Geo Collaborate, it may uh, do a recurve and impact uh, parts of the uh, uh, UK. We'll show you that shortly. And also uh, to the southeast of Kirk, there we go. This is Tropical Storm Leslie. Leslie has 65 mile per hour winds and is forecast to intensify uh, to a category two hurricane over the next several days. Um, we'll be watching both of these, but fortunately none of them will be impacting the United States. Now I wanna go over towards the Gulf of Mexico here. Uh, you can see some cloudiness in the Gulf and also stretching down into the Pacific. There is a stream of moisture coming up into the Gulf of Mexico and uh, the National Hurricane Center is still monitoring of the Gulf for potential uh, tropical development. Yesterday, it went down to 30%. Today, it's back up to 40%. Uh, the models are a little bit iffy and not really converging on a solution. Uh, but one thing that they are indicating is a big area of rain from a low pressure system uh, that's going to form in the Gulf of Mexico and impact Florida. So even though this won't be a tropical storm or a hurricane, at least what it looks like right now, uh, it will be a big rain producer. And so I want to show you uh, the satellite loop uh, full so you can just get a big picture of what's going on here. Uh, here's a look at the Atlantic all the way over to uh, Africa. And this is where we watch uh, seedlings come off of Africa for potential tropical development. Typically uh, waning this time of year in the hurricane season, uh, we look for more development in the uh, uh, Western Caribbean, Caribbean Sea, and the Gulf of Mexico. Uh, around this time of year, but you never know, they can form anywhere and we are watching it. So in uh, Geo Collaborate, let me show you what it looks like. Uh, look at that broad swath of wind, tropical storm force wind probabilities in the Atlantic. Well, this is, uh, this is Hurricane Kirk right here. And you see this, it looks like it's going to uh, make a curve as they typically do and uh, could impact at, as at least a subtropical storm or an extra tropical storm, uh, Southern Ireland, uh, perhaps Southern England, uh, Western France, coastal uh, areas of France. Um, so those folks will be watching this very closely uh, for potential impacts there. And then here is Leslie, Leslie's forecast to follow in the footsteps of Kirk and remain um, well out to sea, uh, but become a hurricane, perhaps a category two hurricane. Now let's focus in on the Gulf of Mexico here. I'm gonna zoom in and show you what the National Hurricane Center's outlook is uh, for the next seven days. This is an outlook for the next seven days for potential tropical development. That is this orange area. When it turns yellow, those of you in the SICE that are using the GeoCollaborate dashboard, uh, when it turns yellow, that is 30% or below. When it turns orange, it's uh, higher, 30 uh, to uh, 60%. And above 60%, it turns red uh, for a higher probability of tropical development. Now, one thing you do notice is the radar. I have the radar data turned on in GeoCollaborate, and you can see quite a bit of rain uh, falling uh, in the panhandle of Florida and also southeast uh, Louisiana. Uh, that rain is uh, pretty much stationary or moving to the northwest uh, slightly. There is uh, just a broad area of low pressure 
uh, over the Gulf of Mexico, and uh, those showers are moving uh, towards the west. And so uh, it will be remain rainy there. Now, one of the things I want to do here is I'm going to turn off uh, the uh, Atlantic outlook uh, for the uh, tropical systems, and then I'm going to turn on the UPF, the quantitative precipitation estimates, over the next seven days. And here's what you notice. It's very rainy in the Gulf of Mexico. That's the forecast. And so it looks like this area of low pressure is going to uh, initiate rain showers uh, Sunday, and they'll continue on for the next several days, and some of those could be quite heavy. We're looking at potential rainfall impacts. Uh, this off the coast here in the Gulf of Mexico is 15 inches of rain. So we could see anywhere from 5 to 10 uh, to perhaps 12 inches of rain on the west coast of Florida, including Sarasota, including Bradenton, uh, the Tampa, Clearwater area, on up towards uh, the Big Bend area. This is where a Hurricane Halid made uh, landfall. Uh, but just to the south, Homosassa Springs, uh, those places uh, could be in for another serious impact with regard to rainfall. There is a lot of cleanup happening right here along Clearwater, Tampa Bay, because of those record surges from Helene that extends all the way down towards uh, Punta Gorda and um, Charlotte Harbor and, and also down towards Naples. So keep your eyes out. This is going to be a, a wet weekend heading into early next week, and then we'll be monitoring any potential development of tropical systems at the same time and beyond. Now, one thing that I do want to do as well is show you a, a new product um, from NASA. This is called the iMERGE product. And what this shows here is global precipitation. This is part of the Global Precipitation Measurement Program at NASA. Uh, this is the iMERGE product that can estimate rainfall intensity. And I showed you the rainfall in Louisiana uh, here. Uh, but you can see that it's raining heavily in the southern part of the Gulf of Mexico, Bay Campeche here, and then also uh, with a um, dying tropical depression uh, that has uh, hit southern Mexico. So there's a lot of precipitation here. Uh, some of it's being drawn up into the Gulf of Mexico. So again, we'll be watching this. But even though we don't have land-based radars out in the ocean, look at this we can monitor rainfall and rainfall rates uh, from this iMERGE program. It is really terrific uh, run out of the Goddard Space Flight Center. And off to the east, you can see the intense precipitation from Hurricane Kirk. And I can move over and show the uh, precipitation falling uh, from Tropical Storm Leslie. Uh, there is an additional wave coming off of the west coast, coast of Africa, and we can watch that as well. I've merged this product with the night lights uh, product as well uh, that we can monitor um, power out from uh, storms and things like that. And I do want to take you to a very interesting high resolution image. Uh, for those of you watching in uh, uh, the Southeast uh, here, this video, uh, this is Augusta, Georgia. Take a look, this is Augusta, Georgia. And the night lights uh, from Landsat, the Landsat satellite, and also uh, additional satellites uh, in August of 2024. So this is what Augusta typically looks like at night from space. Uh, you can see all of these uh, city lights. And I want to show you what it looked like after Hurricane Helene passed through. So this is in August, and this is on September 28th. Look at that. That is just about the entire city of Augusta, Georgia, in the dark. Here we go. Before, on August 24th, on August of 2024, after the storm, boom. You can see that difference going back and forth of how much power was lost and what the response has resulted in with Augusta uh, being back. Not everybody but a lot of power is back in Augusta. And I do want to talk about power out because we are now thankfully below a million meters 
uh, that have been out. That's uh, businesses and residents uh, that have been uh, out of power since Hurricane Helene. Now we're down to 724,295. Uh, that's of this morning, uh, around uh, 11 o'clock this morning. And you can see the numbers. South Carolina uh, down to 271,000. Uh, 227,000 in North Carolina, and in Georgia, 201,000. So there are still a lot of crews that are responding and working. Uh, it gets harder as you get down to that final percentage because some areas will require a total electrical infrastructure rebuild to get the power back on. Uh, so that's going to be have significant impacts in certain areas. Virginia, you're down to 13,000 and down to 10,000 in Florida. Now, one of the uh, points uh, about hardest hit uh, locations, this statement came out from the Edison Electric Institute yesterday uh, that there will be customers unable to uh, re receive power until these communities are rebuilt because of the major power infrastructure impacts uh, that have happened. And so once damage assessments are complete, impacted electric companies will have a better understanding of the total number of customers who need to be red tagged. That means removed from the grid and removed from the outage count. So we'll see numbers go up as damage assessment. They come in, they take a look at a structure like this one in the picture. Oh my goodness, it cannot be restored. There is nothing there. So they remove that property uh, from the restoration tag. So realistic numbers of restored power uh, can be reported to the public uh, and to utility companies as well. Uh, so there's been just tremendous damage, Florida, Big Bend area, all the way up through Georgia, into Western South Carolina, into Western North Carolina. And as far as that goes, uh, there is uh, travel impacts as well. Uh, this is from uh, the Drive NC uh, website. They added a new symbol here, and that is access limited only to local and hurricane response only. These roads in Western North Carolina should be considered closed. There are shortages of water, food, gas, power, and communications. There are more and more Starlink systems uh, being donated and set up in Western North Carolina to help with bandwidth and communications. Not everybody has been uh, delivered these. Uh, you need power to run those Starlink uh, uh, Wi-Fi uh, systems that connect to the Starlink satellites as well. Non-emergency travel is still prohibited, still prohibited in Western North Carolina. Now you cannot get from North Carolina to Tennessee on I-40 or I-26. Too much damage to those roadways exist. It's going to take up to a year to repair some of these roadways. We'll certainly uh, give updates uh, during the, that time as when roads open up. Also, people evacuating the Asheville area. Once you've gotten out, perhaps you've gotten out of the mountain, you've gotten into Asheville, and now you want to get out of there, uh, you can use I-40 East or I-26 East to get out of town. Uh, that's it for this tropical update. Uh, this has been provided for the All Hazards Consortium and the Sensitive Information Sharing Environment. Uh, we strive to provide the latest information, outlooks on weather and impacts of tropical uh, weather as well. We are monitoring all of the tropics constantly, and we'll be back with another update uh, during the day tomorrow. As long as there is a chance of tropical development within the Gulf of Mexico or within uh, an area that could threaten the United States, uh, we'll do a tropical update. Some of them will be very short. Some of them will be a little bit longer, depending on the type of threat uh, that it poses. So thanks very much for watching this update. Uh, I'm Dave Jones with Storm Center Communications and Geo Collaborate. Uh, the next update will be tomorrow. Uh, thanks so much, and please take care of yourself and take care of your neighbors.